Hi, welcome to Unsightly Opinions. My name is Tamara. Today we are going to be looking at voiceover on the Mac. This is going to be part one of a multi-part series where we look at voiceover on both the Mac and the iPhone. Today's video is going to be focusing on how to use the Mac, the very, very basics, the best commands so that you can start navigating independently, but it is by no means comprehensive. So if you have questions about particular applications, particular things that you'd like to see, let me know and we can address that in a future video. I will be listing timestamps in the description down below. So if you need to quickly review something or you want to skip past a section because you already know the contents, you can absolutely do that and find that down there. We're going to be starting with a bit of a keyboard orientation, so if you're not familiar with what the keyboard looks like on Mac, we'll go over all of the accessory keys, and then we'll dive into some of the most functional commands so that you can start using your computer independently. Without further ado, let's dive on in. Let's start with some basic keyboard navigation and orientation. This tutorial is going to assume that most users have a basic understanding of the letter layout of the QWERTY keyboard system. However, we will now do a quick review of all of the accessory keys that you may need to use while using a screen reader. There are two main types of keyboards that you're going to encounter when working on a Mac computer. The first is the compact keyboard, which is the standard keyboard shipped with all desktop and laptop computers. This keyboard does not have a number pad or separated arrow keys and has an additional button in the bottom left hand corner, the function key. The layout on the compact keyboard along the left hand side of the keyboard in order from top to bottom, you are going to find the escape key, the tilde or grav key, the tab, the caps lock, the shift, and the function. Following along the bottom row of the keyboard from left to right, you are going to find function, control, option, command, spacebar, command, option, and the arrow keys. Left arrow key, down and up, which are placed on top of each other, and right arrow key. Moving down the right hand side of the keyboard, you are going to find your eject key. On laptops, this is where you are going to find the fingerprint reader, as well as the accessibility quick start toggle. Following down the right hand side, you will find the delete key, the forward slash, enter or return, the shift key, and then the right arrow. Along the top of the keyboard, from left to right, you are going to find buttons that serve different functions. Starting on the top left, you will find the escape key. Moving to the right, you will find your brightness dimming key. This is also your F1 key if you press the function key in the bottom left corner. Moving to the right, you have the increase brightness key, which is also your F2, again pressing that function key. Moving to the right again, we have F3 and F4, which change the visual layout of the computer, which will not be important for many voiceover users. F F5 is not assigned, F6 is not assigned, F7 is defaulted as the rewind button, F8 is defaulted as the play pause button, F9 is the forward button, F10 is the mute volume button, F11 is volume down, F12 is volume up, and the far right again your eject key and or fingerprint reader sensor. Moving to the expanded keyboard, which is my preferred method of navigating voiceover, you have the exact same layout in the QWERTY minus the function key in the bottom left hand corner. The order along the bottom row of the expanded keyboard is control, option, command, space, command, option, and control. Moving to the right of our QWERTY setup, you will find four distinct arrow keys at the bottom, left, up, down, and right. Above your arrow keys, along the very top, you will find your expanded function keys, F13, 14, and 15. Below these are six full-sized keys. Moving from left to right in the middle row would be function, home, and page up and moving from left to right in the bottom row is delete, end, and page down. On the farthest right, you will find the number pad, which has a raised marking on the number five. At the very top above the number pad, you will see your expanded function keys, F16, 17, 18, and 19. Below that, from left to right, you will find clear equals divide and multiply. To turn on voiceover, you are going to do one of two things. On a laptop, you can triple tap the top rightmost button. Optionally, you could also press the bottom left button, function, the button next to the spacebar, command, and F5. Counting from the top left, we have escape, F1, F2, F3, F4, F5. And pressing function, command, F5 will turn on voiceover. On the expanded keyboard, you don't need the function key. All you need to do is press command, 
and F5 and press them together. Voiceover on Finder, Desktop, Lumix Volume. Actions available. To turn off voiceover, it's the exact same command. You press Command F5. Voiceover off. Or on the compact keyboard, you press Function Command F5. Or you triple tap the top rightmost corner for the accessibility shortcut. VoiceOver allows users to interact with the computer without ever needing to touch the mouse. To navigate with VoiceOver, you are going to want to use your VoiceOver keys, which are Control and Option. We use the Control and Option keys pressed together to tell the computer that we are making a VoiceOver command. It may seem a little bit awkward at first to use the Control and Option keys, but you will get used to it with time. When giving VoiceOver a command, I find it's most often most comfortable to use the middle finger and ring finger on the control and option keys. It will allow my pinky to be free to press the shift key and my index finger to be free to press any of the lower left hand QWERTY keys or the command key. When working on the compact keyboard, the same is true. I will use the same fingers. One in from the left, I will find control. Two in from the left, I will find option. And I will use my ring finger and middle finger to press those keys. That will leave my pinky free to either press the function key or the shift key and my index finger to be free to press the command or any of the lower left QWERTY keys. The voiceover keys are often abbreviated as the VO keys. Whenever you see VO, it means press control and option with whatever button comes after. Basic navigation consists of using your VO keys and your arrow keys, which means left, right, up, and down. Here, I can use my up and down arrow keys to move to different places on my desktop. Braille Blaster V2, volume, recut, volume, video edits three, volume, everything, folder, video edits three, volume. When I get to the beginning or end of a group of items and there is nothing beyond that point, it will play a tone. Listen when I get to the bottom. Braille Blaster V, recut, volume, video edits three, vol everything, folder, everything, folder, actions available. Oftentimes, you can simply use the arrow keys without the voiceover keys to navigate. To open something with VoiceOver, you are going to want to press the VO keys in addition to the spacebar. Now in Lumix window, icon view collection. This is the equivalent to a double click. Oftentimes, when you are in different types of windows, you will need to interact with the content in those windows because it will separate it into large chunks of information so you can navigate quickly. In this case, we have a collection. Vertical splitter. If I move to the left, we have a vertical splitter. Sidebar table. Lumix comma, eject eject button, selected. And a sidebar which contains a table. In order to interact with content, you are going to need to hit the VO keys or control and option with the shift key and the down arrow. In sidebar table, Lumix comma, eject eject button, selected. Lumix comma, eject eject button, level two. Actions available. I can now navigate just using my VO keys and the arrows. Locations, shared comma, shared iCloud, iCloud, ex templates, comma, downloads, comma, templates, iCloud, iCloud drive, shared comma, locations, e Lumix comma, e video edits three comma, eject eject button, Lumix comma, eject eject button. With the contents. When I want to stop interacting with something, I will press the VO keys, shift, and up arrow. Out of sidebar, table. If I move back to the collection, vertical splitter icon view collection, I will have the exact same experience. I can interact pressing the VO keys, shift, and down arrow. DTIM folder. Actions available. To open that folder, again, I could press my VO keys and space. Icon view collection. And because it's a collection again, I would need to interact with that collection by pressing my VO keys, shift, and down arrow. 103 underscore PNA folder. Actions available. To stop interacting, I press my VO keys, shift, and up arrow. Out of icon view collection, one item selected. To make voiceover stop talking, you can press the control key. So now I'm going to interrupt voiceover while it's saying something by pressing the control key. Vert sidebar table. To navigate to your favorite applications, you will probably want to navigate to your dock. By default, the dock runs along the bottom edge of your computer. You are going to want to press your VO keys in addition to D. Dock, contacts, 13 of 43. Actions available. Now you can use your left and right arrow keys to navigate through your dock. Photos, tw music, open, reminders, to music, oh, photos, tw contacts, system preferences, calculator, actions available. To open an application, all you have to do is press VO space. Finder, DCIM, window, calculator, window, 
48 point dot Apple system UI font, white, align right, zero, main display. To close a window or an application, you do not need the voiceover keys. We are going to use a Mac shortcut. In this case, to quit the calculator application, we are going to press Command, which is just to the left of the spacebar, in addition to the Q key. Finder, DCIM, window, sidebar, table, no selection. To close a window, we can press Command W. Close window, Lumix, volume, actions available. To navigate to our files on our desktop, we use a slightly modified dock command. We press the VO keys in addition to Shift and D. Desktop, desktop, group. And then we can navigate through our desktop the exact same way we navigate through other items. Braille Blaster V2, vol recut, volume. Braille Bl Lumix, volume. Braille Blaster V2, vo Lumix, volume. Running across the top of every application on your computer is your menu bar. To access your menu bar, you press V, O, and M. Menu bar, Apple. And you can use your left Finder. and right arrows. File, edit, view, go, window, help. To help navigate through the menu. If you want to look at a menu, you can just simply press the down arrow. Edit, menu, nine item, undo, move of eight items, command Z. Copy left, double quotation, select all, command A, show clipboard. Start dictation, D. Emoji ampersand, symbol Z. And voiceover will read out the menu contents. To close a menu, you simply have to press Escape. Closing menu, Lumix, volume. Actions available. If you want to access the information in the top right of your menu bar, you are going to want to press your VO keys and M twice. OBS Studio. And that is going to list things like what's playing, your date and time, your battery power, etc. Bluetooth menu extra. We hyphen fee comma, connect user menu extra. Search, search menu extra. Control center comma, microphone in you, Siri, Siri menu extra. Friday, June 10, 5, colon, 01 p.m. clock. To leave the menu bar, all you have to do is press Escape. Finder, Desktop, Lumix, Volume, Actions Available. And you will return to whatever application you are in. If you ever get confused about what a voiceover key does, or you want to learn more shortcuts, all you need to do is press your VO keys and H. Voiceover Help Menu, Five Items. Then navigate through the menu, and you can go to User Guide Control Op Commands Help User Guide Control Option Question Mark And you can go through the User Guide Commands Help Menu Control Option HH Commands Help Keyboard Help Control Option K Keyboard Help Sounds Help Menu Sounds Help Quick Start Tutorial Control Option FN Command 8 And the Quick Start Tutorial The first time you start VoiceOver, the Quick Start Tutorial will automatically start and will walk you through the basics of how to use VoiceOver. It covers most of the features that we have covered in this tutorial, like interacting, general navigation, and changing sliders. Sounds help. Keyboard help control option K. Keyboard help can be additionally helpful. Starting keyboard help. Type keys to hear their names. Hold down the voiceover keys while typing to hear voiceover commands. Press the escape key at the top left corner of the keyboard to stop help. And it basically said what it does on the tin. Keyboard help is going to help you locate specific keys on your keyboard if you don't know what they are, and understand what specific key commands will do. So if I press VOD, it's going to tell me that that key command is going to go to the dock. However, it will not go to the dock or interact with any contents on your computer. Control, Option, D, go to dock, moves voiceover cursor to the dock. If I press VO Shift D, it'll tell me that it's going to go to the desktop while not going to the desktop. Option, Control, Shift D, go to desktop, moves voiceover cursor to the desktop. To leave keyboard help, all you need to do is press Escape. Escape, stopping keyboard help. The final thing that we'll discuss in this tutorial is adjusting the rate, pitch, speed, or voice that VoiceOver uses. To access this quickly, we'll press our VO keys in addition to the Command key and the Shift key, and then press right or left arrow. Voice Alex English. We can change which voice voiceover uses. Using the up or down arrows. Some of them are pretty ridiculous. Bruce English. Hello. Daniel English. Daniel Compact English. English. Fiona English. Red English. But some of them are equally acceptable. You can also use a variety of the Siri voices to navigate with voiceover. I usually leave it on the default Alex because that's what I'm used to. Fiona. Daniel. Daniel. Bruce. Alex English. You will need to continue holding down all four of the keys to stay in this menu. To swap from voice to another setting, just press the right or left arrows. Rate 50%. To adjust the rate, you can press the up or down arrows to make it speak faster or slower. 55, 60%, 65, 70%, 75%, 80%, 85%, 90%, 95%, 100%, 95%, 90%, 85%, 80%, 75%, 60%, 55%, 60%, 55%.
If we press right arrow again, pitch 50%. We're going to get the pitch. We can make it higher or lower by pressing the up or down arrow keys. 50, 6, 6, 7, 80, 7, 6, 6, 6, 6, 5, 5, 4, 4, 30, 30, 25, 30, 30, 40, 40, 50 percent. If we press right arrow again, volume 35 percent. We get the volume. We can make voiceover louder or softer entirely separate from our system volume. 40, 40, 50, 50, 6, 6, 7, 75, 7, 6, 6, 50, 50, 40, 40, 30, 30 percent. Intonation, 50 percent. And same with the intonation, either higher or lower. 50, 6, 6, 7, 80, 80, 90 percent, 95, 9, 80, 80, 6, 6, 6, 6, 50, 50 percent. Braille table, English, unified, system. And in this case, I use a Braille display with this computer, so it will list Braille table and the Braille system that I have chosen. Voice, Alex, English. Moving again to the right, we return to our voices. Lumix volume. Let's quickly review all of the commands that we learned in this tutorial. We learned that our voiceover keys, or VO keys, are control and option. Basic navigation consists of hitting the VO keys, or control and option, and up, down, left, or right arrows. To navigate to our applications in the dock, we will use VOD. To navigate to items on the desktop, we will use VO Shift D. To select items, we will use VO space, which is the equivalent of a double click. To interact with items, we will use VO shift down arrow. To stop interacting, we will use VO shift up arrow. To access our menu bar, we will use VO M. And to navigate our accessory items in the menu bar, we will press VO M M twice. To enter the voiceover help menu, we will press VO and H. To change the pitch, tone, intonation, or voice of voiceover, we will use Control, Option, Command, Shift, left and right arrows to select which feature we want to change, and up and down to change the voice or rate. One final piece of advice. Practice truly does make perfect when it comes to using voiceover. So try and find excuses to use voiceover when you're navigating your computer. If you need to quickly review something, there will be timestamps listed in the description which you can access to find commands quickly. This is part one of a multi-part series exploring various aspects of voiceover navigation and application navigation on both Mac and iPhone. So if you haven't found the answer to your question yet, be sure to leave it in the comments down below and it will no doubt be addressed in a future video. But I am always happy to help answer any questions that come up in the meantime. And if you enjoy content like this, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, or engage down in the comments or on any of my other social media accounts listed in the description. That's all I have for you today. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.